Here we are, Peach. The Orlando Magic fall to the Charlotte Hornets. 112 to 105, bringing us to 4 and 10 on the season. It was an ugly game. If you bet that the Hornets would lead from beginning to end, then you made a lot of money and you're probably the only happy person watching this right now. <laughs> Cuz we had a we had a we had a couple games, Peach, where we looked good. We looked solid. Sure. And then we put up this stinker. Sorry, I muted myself. Yeah. <laughs> because I get yelled at sometimes for making noise when he starts the show without telling me. Well, you know, <laughs> so sometimes you deserve myself. it. <laughs> but yeah, well, it wasn't pretty. I'll I'll run through the box store a box score piece. You stop me if you want to interject something. I'd all like right? to interject at the beginning. Okay, but... well here he goes. Go for it. Look, Jalen Suggs has a ton of turnovers. He treats the ball like it doesn't matter. Mm. And he only scores two points on one of ten shooting. That's Oof. a big problem when we don't have Paulo in there and we need him to produce at least at a mid Something. level, he can't hurt us. He needed to produce at least 10 points for my parlay alternate lines. That's what he needed to produce. Well, but 10 instead, points would have helped because we lost by 7. Yeah, he <laughs> scored. He shot 10 times, only made one of them, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. He had five turnovers, Peach, but it felt like more because they were at amazed that was that they were at opportune times or for the, for the Charlotte Hornets, they were at opportune times. For us, inopportune times. And uh, fouled out with two points. He was a minus 13 on the night, although he's not alone in that. Our whole starting lineup was pretty much minus teens-ish. Um, you know, just we kind of got worked end-to-end. -end. It really wasn't even that close as this seven-point win might show for the Charlotte Hornets. They kind of beat us down from the jump. They shot 47% from the field. We shot 40%. I mean, our three-point shooting tonight, if we're taking a silver lining in any type of Pyrrhic victory, which we're not, they we shot 39% from, the, from three. They only shot 20%. I mean, we could have had it there. Um, we, we beat them on the boards, but it felt like we got worked down low. The offensive boards, even we had more offensive boards. No, yeah, it, it, felt like, it didn't feel like that when we were watching. We weren't scoring with as much ease maybe inside as in past games, but, yeah, we... We, we did okay on the boards. Uh, our mm. our second unit did a nice job in the third quarter when they came in. Look, 10 points in 10 minutes from R.J. Hampton mm. is all you can ask of that guy. And yeah. I know we talked a little bit about it on our podcast. Go check out episode 32 if you didn't. <laughs> Why is R.J. Hampton not playing more? He played so well and so sound in this game that, like, it makes you wonder if, like, okay, if this R.J. Hampton could play a few more minutes, maybe I start him right now with the lineup we have like he's over playing, Suggs he's playing within himself moment, right? he's not turning the ball over he's hitting yeah. open shots he's doing everything you could ask of him mm -hmm. with less minutes yeah I, I don't know if that's the key but I doubt it I mean he didn't see the court in the first half it it was and he only saw this court in the second half because Mosley got so frustrated with the the effort that the starters right in, engaged in the, the third quarter with and it kind of worked. Yeah, the second I mean, unit played pretty of, well. Yeah, they came out a little bit hot. Caleb Houston hit down a few, uh, knocked down a few threes yep. tonight. That looked good. But really, I mean, Charlotte always kind of pulled away. We would yeah. get it to nine, and then it'd be back up to fifteen. It just felt like that pretty much all game. I was really surprised. Most peach. I thought. I mean, coming into this, we're gonna dominate down low. Mm -hmm. We got Wendell, we got Bull Bull, we got Mo Bamba playing against Steve Clifford, which is always a good thing. And he balled out in the first half. It was looking good. But points in the paint, Mason Plumley went ham on us. They got 64 points in the paint to R40. I mean, our team, if we're going to be successful, that's where we need to dominate the game. Yes, you're right. And with the size and the the guys that Athleticism, have inside, like we it. should have gotten them. Mason Plumley shoots from his ear. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, like what a we're losing to that guy. The, he shot that first free throw, and I was like, "Wait, did I just see that?" <laughs> and you reacted, and I was like, "Yeah, I did see that." <laughs> it's a yeah. weird foul shot. You know what else is weird? Terry Rozier's facial hair. 
he's like wants a full beard, but he only has like the sideburn that it separates for a while. Then there's another little scraggly. He's going old like, school chops with the goatee kind of vibe. But he's bald, so it's like it doesn't attach to anything. You can't have just a sideburn floating in the. <laughs> you, it's got to have a home. It's got to have an attachment. It's, there's rules to facial hair. I don't, I don't know if there are. I don't know if there are. I, I'm gonna try to take some highlights from this piece. Franz had a really good game. I thought, although he did miss a couple bunnies, oh, he was still nine late. for seventeen. Yeah, he. That's not too. That's he pretty played good. pretty well. He, he made all his free throws and his one three. Twenty three points. Three, but... Um, twenty three points, three assists, six rebounds. Solid game. Bowl, you know, okay from beyond the arc. Five for thirteen, not great. Two from six from beyond the arc. Chuma probably one of his better games. <laughs> two from six from beyond the arc yeah okay kind of it w- yeah it was one of his better games i mean look i have peach is ten boards we're, we're, and th- ten three boards and 10 points we're yucking it up over 33 here three minutes i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen his defense peach, is fantastic peach has a vende- vendetta no, against his def- Chuma. his defense is, is amazing he always and guards the their best reason player he's playing in yes. these games well he's but and it and it on a night where we don't need him offensively then you can afford to have him out there. But right now, while we're missing Paulo and so many offensive weapons, even even though he's doing well on the defensive end, yeah. it, it, it hurts us that he can't produce at a higher rate on the offensive side of the ball. And it, you just want to see him get going somehow. And I feel like his drives to the basket, that's where he's best, not just sitting there and shooting a three. So I don't know what happens, but our offense always seems to kind of leave this point where it's like we throw it to him and he's wide open for three. So whoever plays that spot yeah, needs they to be somebody up, who can right. shoot. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. not him right now. So, I mean. It is allowing opposing defenses to not have to guard a guy at no, times. Yeah. Yeah. That's a factor. It's no good. You don't want to be on the power play the whole, the whole time, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Bombo with another Steve Clifford revenge game. 5-11 from the field. Did some big man shit. 11 boards. 14 points. I mean, this is kind of the energy and the tenacity that we're looking for from Bamba. Had a really nice series where he had a dunk, mm-hmm. had a block, and then hit a three. I mean, that was what yeah. he can bring to the table. But again, consistency has always been the Who issue. Who is this man? I said right. a few times today, like, where's this guy been? Well, we haven't. He's he he's been on the shelf since the last game. We haven't right. talked about him since the last time that we played the Hornets and Steve Clifford. Hence, my suggestion: Can we either? Well, can we just have Steve Clifford coach all of our opponents? I was going to say or trade Mobamba, but I'm not going to put that energy out there. I will. <laughs> Maybe Clifford's ready to bury the hatchet, and he wants a veteran Mobamba on his team. Oh. Call us. We can make some deals. <laughs> yeah, he certainly doesn't like the the rookie big man. He's sitting, was it Mark Williams over there on the bench? Yeah, Williams from Duke. I you know, would think he would get a little bit more run or get some playing time to see what's what. Nope. Um, but it seems like, yeah, they're not really interested in player development, maybe in Charlotte. Yeah. No, uh, that's not Steve Clifford's MO. He, he only gives minutes to the guys he thinks deserves it. Book Knight touched the court and, the court and then came right back off, as did Kai Jones, second-year player. I mean, sure. those guys can't can't touch the court. Um, Blew his hair in the league. Yeah. <laughs> we got beat by kind of our game. Charlotte with a very balanced scoring attack. Washington with 14. I can't believe Mason Plumley had 18 and 11, man. A very quiet 18. That is insulting to us. Um, LaMelo Ball, quite possibly, Peace, you said it, top five for guys you want to open hand smack on the face. Slap in the face, yep. yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think he's probably in a lot of top fives. He just looks like a young man that needs an adjustment. He needs some humbling. Yeah. Certainly. He needs a come-to-Jesus meeting, as, as some people say. The NBA did not help by giving him that bogus – all-star nod last year either he he's not an all-star level player uh, i know it's his only his second game back but he did not look great five turnovers i mean yeah, he was look, minus this was his two first game back it was so, his second game back but okay yeah. second but i mean he's just working himself i'm gonna be hard on I still him because think he, he has looks like a punk kind of yeah, yeah. oh he's definitely a punk <laughs> <laughs> i mean open hand and like from top down like i've thought about it where's my <laughs> like, powder like from up down not one of these side crafts but one of these yeah, you know, <laughs> Terry Rozier playing really well, plus seventeen on the night. Kelly Oubre, I like him as a player. Sixteen he was points, that annoying guy. Yeah. yeah, well, even at the end of the game, he was annoying with two stupid fouls that pissed off Clifford to the point where I thought he was going to get pulled. But <laughs> the most annoying player for me, 
was the, uh, the, the, the species we thought was extinct that rose from the fossils. Ah. The Teo Maladon. The Theo. Yeah. 16 points, or four, I'm sorry, 14 points off the bench, yep. but shot 100% from the floor. Four for four from the field, two for two from three-point land. I mean, that's what you want in a bench guy, yeah, right? 25 I mean, minutes? You can't ask for much more than that. Yeah. Uh, it'd be hard to. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I liked the uh, the fun fact tonight that did not get a bell, mm. but the uh, name to height ratio. Yes. Bull, bull. The guy won a hat for suggesting it. I, th- I mean, so that's I think worth it. Was it. totally worth it. Yep. That felt like something I would have cooked up, like a joke I would have made on the show or something like that. So I totally loved it. I know you didn't get a bell from them. I'm going to give you a bell right here if you see it. <laughs> Spread the word. Let them know. I loved it. I thought it was good. Bull, bull. Bull, bull was number one. Mm-hmm. And then Mo Bamba, I think, was number four. And then JT Thor, who was on was, the I bench, believe, number two, yep. was on the bench for the Hornets. So it made sense. Three of those gentlemen were were in uniform at that. And speaking of uniform, we got to oh, see the new city edition talked about it. Oh, I'm also going to let it slip through the cracks. It looks even worse on the court. It really. I mean, what what is it? The rise, the kingdom, the kingdom on the rise, kingdom on the rise. Well, Protect certainly wasn't on the rise tonight. I think. You what couldn't the, even see the pinstripes on the jersey, let alone the chain mail that was supposed to be there, because I don't know if it yeah. got too sweaty and then it disappeared. I've seen it on the right on the jerseys yeah. and stuff, and I'm like, all right, I don't hate the chain mail thing. I'm not. It's uh, yeah. the dark blue that ruins it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't it's mind the, the concept. Color. I mean, I'm I'm a fantasy nerd. I'm Lord. Give me Lord of the Rings. Give me all that I'm stuff winning. all day. Game of Thrones. All so day. you can sell me on a knight, man. Oh, yeah. You can sell me on a knight. You can sell me on a wizard. I love knights around a round table. Yeah, if they're around a square table. I call foul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the refs certainly were there at the end of the game. Um, but uh, yeah, I I don't get it. I I wish that the piping. Was in our blue, like you said, and I think that would make it pop a lot more. I think I speak for a lot of people when I said, for me anyway, I fell in love with this team because their jersey is sick. Yeah, the colors are sick. It's a good scheme, Mm -hmm. and I love this thing. Yeah, and so like when you mess to now take with the jersey and just trash it like that, and I know that's the way a lot of people felt when we added the orange. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, the first two inclinations of orange I disliked immensely. Yeah, we're big swing and a misses. So I have to hope, because I dislike this jersey so much, I have to <laughs> hope that this is that step. Yes. That, like, this is that gray jersey they came out with, gray and orange jersey that was awful. And then they went to the white one in orange, which was still bad, but a little better. And then, boom, and the third time, they got it. So hopefully they don't take as many. It's improving. But hopefully they take this idea and, like, improve it and actually make it good. Yeah, because I do like the concept. There's something there. Yeah. yeah. The court looked cool. I I didn't like the court, man. You didn't I, like I don't the like the, the chain mail and the key. It just reminds me of the trash can we have in the bathroom. Yeah, it does Or look those like trash something. cans that are a hoop that you kind of shoot things in. You go, Kobe, you know, yeah. every time you shoot. It does kind of look like a metal fence. Yeah, it, it wasn't aesthetically pleasing to me. I didn't dig it. But I think it would be better if it matched what we were wearing. Sure. If you could see that on our jersey, it would be a little more effective yeah as the thing that goes with it maybe yeah i, I, I see I don't what know. they were going for i think there needs there's a lot of room for improvement with the jerseys and yeah. hopefully with our team i like the font yeah it's fine okay with the font it's fine but outline it in a nicer lighter blue right don't bring navy to a beautiful cerulean blue house no we don't want Not that on my watch so next game peach wednesday or no is that uh, the 16th, yeah, Wednesday against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Timberwolves. We're going to need to uh, turn a lot around between now and then if we have a chance of playing against the Timberwolves, who haven't been great, but they are starting to turn things around mm. a little bit there. I'm not going to talk about any injured guys because I said on episode 32, we're playing with the guys we have on the court, and the guys on the court need to win. But we did talk a lot about injuries in episode 32. <laughs> yeah, definitely watch the cold <laughs> open if you haven't already and you want to laugh about injuries. That was amazing. Really proud of that episode. Go check it out. Human Torch is still fighting. He will get that bank loan. He will yeah. one day. All right, Peach. Anything else to add here before we let the people go? Not much, man. I think we I think we covered it. I think we nailed it. Well, check us out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, subscribe, like. It helps. We're going to do our next live stream next Monday, a week from today. My birthday, Peach. Mm. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll be here and there before then. So we hope to see you. Peace out, everybody.